this particular patient, we think in based on epidemiological data, that just is slightly more common in men than in women, and this is a male. Uh, he presents at the age of 55, which is a pretty typical age. Uh, his symptoms are not atypical in the sense that he prevents with somewhat vague abdominal complaints, uh, some early satiety, and then on workup, finding of anemia is also common. Uh, he had a gastric gist, uh, which you can understand why he might experience some early satiety, uh, as well as some abdominal discomfort. We believe that many of these tumors will uh, bleed slightly, which is the reason for finding anemia. And uh, so his workup from the basis of his symptoms and his blood work was very consistent. On endoscopy, the finding of the mass in the stomach with ulceration is again consistent with this idea that he probably was having some bleeding from his tumor, which contributed to his anemia. The description of the ultrasound component of the endoscopy um, is consistent with a lesion that is likely to be malignant uh, versus not. Uh, first of all, the size of the lesion being five centimeters or more is much more likely to be malignant. When we think about GIST, we don't necessarily think about them as benign or malignant. We think more about their behavior. Uh, but certainly a five centimeter GIST is one that has the potential to be metastatic at some point. Uh, the description of the hypogenicity, um, hypoechogenicity, excuse me, um, is very consistent with lesions that are much more likely to have a higher risk of recurrence or being uh, uh, have a more aggressive behavior. Um, I think those findings in terms of noting um, on uh, EUS are much more significant when you're looking at a small tumor, say one that's one and a half or two centimeters, in terms of for the gastroenterologist trying to make a decision about how should I monitor or address this lesion? Is this something that patient that needs to go to surgery? Um, is this somebody I should be monitoring? Um, and uh, those findings uh, that were described are more consistent with something that is more likely to uh, be concerning. Um, the, I think the importance of uh, the biopsy can't be understated. It's interesting um, in this particular biopsy tissue, um, there was a sufficient amount of tissue to give us a mitotic rate. Um, oftentimes in small biopsies, we can't. Um, and uh, the information is helpful, certainly in terms of thinking about uh, this lesion uh, being one that is potentially more aggressive. Um, in somebody that has metastatic disease, the mitotic rate is less important. That feature is particularly important when you're thinking about a primary tumor and assessing whether or not this is a candidate for adjuvant therapy or not. The um, finding and using the tissue for mutational testing is very important, um, particularly now as we not only have Polivac, but we have other drugs, um, particularly avapritinib, which is approved for patients with a very specific mutation, a PDGFRA D842V mutation, which really all of the other tyrosine kinases available um, that we are aware of um, with data, um, specifically imatinib, sunitinib, and regorafenib, there is really no consistent data um, or data suggestive that these drugs are effective against that mutation. So um, having that information is very important to say this is a patient where imatinib makes sense and the patient is going to derive benefit um, versus not. There are some other types of GIS where we think about uh, imatinib maybe not being the best um, agent. Um, those are tumors that are found not to have a kinase mutation in uh, KIT or p for alpha uh, Many of these tumors are found in the stomach, oftentimes in younger patients, and have a loss of a protein called SDHB um, and really have a very different biology. Um, and those patients don't particularly benefit from imatinib, but may have some benefit from sutent and regorafenib. Uh, less likely, there are some other mutations that are rarely associated with just um, where 
where um, knowing the underpinnings would be of importance. We found BRAF mutations. There are N-TRAC uh, translocations that have been identified in some gist. Um, also tumors that are associated with NF1. Um, so these are other mutations that if KIT and PGFR-alpha are negative, it's important to pursue additional testing to understand what the tumor is and what uh, therapeutic options might be available for treating your patient.